you are into movie and movie-related discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz, and I'm here today with... Zero. Zero, how you doing this week? Um, thankfully over the stress of the work project that happened last week, but definitely still recovering from it. Right. Uh, as people know right now, Zero is in a government assignment where he is dealing with top-grade weapons. He can't go into the specifics, but uh, we do value his service for this country. <laughs> So, uh, congratulations, Zero. I'm proud of you. <laughs> we are here today to review the 1992 action drama Hard Boiled, starring Chow Yun Fat, directed by John Woo. You know, I had a bunch of things I wanted to talk about before the review, so, a lot about John Woo, which I know that you're familiar with, Chow Yun Fat, of course. But the one thing that stuck out to me watching this movie was this. How many goddamn movies is Tony Leung in that are hallmarks of Asian cinema? Like, what the hell? <laughs> I put, literally, I turned on the movie, and it's like, Chow Young fat totally young. I'm like, he's in this too? What is this? <laughs> like, like I, don't get me wrong. The more and more I see him, I love him as an actor. He's become one of my favorite actors. But, god damn, does this guy, is this guy in every single great Asian movie? I, is that what's going on here, Zero? Is that what it is? Yeah, it almost seems like, uh, if it's like a... A really, really beloved movie from the Hong Kong cinema space. He's probably in it. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, uh, if I watch Seven Samurai and all of a sudden Tony Young is in there somewhere because he t traveled in time to be in the Akira Kurosawa film, I'd be one a, a little disturbed, and two, I would be like, y you know, I guess even Kurosawa knew. I guess I don't know, <laughs> but shit, man, like I didn't even know he was in this movie. Like, th that's why it, it surprised me. Because I, I kept hearing, like, oh, Chow Young Fat's great in this. Chow Young Fat's awesome in this. I did not hear anything about Tony Young at all in this movie. And, man, he is young in this. Like, holy shit. Yes, he is. He's like, like damn. If, if I went that way, he's fucking handsome. Shit, man. Yeah, he, right. yeah, he had not become grizzled just yet. <laughs> yeah. And even when he's, like, grizzled, he's kind of handsome, too. So it's like... So unfair when so many people, when certain people are just attractive no matter what age. <laughs> God. Okay, so let's get past it before I get really bitter into the review of Hard Boiled, starring Chow Yum Fat and Tony Leung, directed by John Woo. Okay, so we're going to do light spoilers on this review, so uh, keep that in mind. If you want to skip over to the final thoughts, go right ahead or come back when you're ready. So you know, this movie reminded me of when we reviewed The Raid Redemption last year. And the, the one reason why it reminded me is because the film does one thing so well that it kind of drowns out the rest that's not done very well. And that's the action. The action in this movie is excellent. But it's different in the action that is also in Raid Redemption, where the Raid Redemption is more grizzled hand-to-hand -hand combat and it's more brutal, whereas this one's more stylized gunplay. And I like both very much. But there are two different types of action that you can get into. But I definitely like what this movie did when it came to those action sequences. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, John Woo's hallmark uh, back in the day was just always gunplay. Just if you saw his name attached to uh, something from the Hong Kong cinema space, just the one thing you could just predictably walk into is knowing that you were probably going to be in for some intense, like, gunfights with just insane explosions and just completely wild action and by god this movie delivers it in the spades <laughs> oh, oh my god this is some of the best action i've ever seen in a movie it is astounding what they do in this movie and and, and yes it's stylized so to a certain extent some of it's unbelievable but you don't really care because it's so fun and it's like so intense when you're watching it. Like, watch this throughout the film. I, and you, you know me, Zero. You, you know me fairly well. I, I'm kind of a curmudgeon when it comes to certain types of films and what they do. So when when they start diving in the air and they're flying all over the place, not literally flying all over the place, but when they're airborne throughout most of the film in their action sequences, a part of me wants to be like, yeah, okay, that's not very believable. But I... The style of the film when it comes to the action sequences are so well done, I just don't care. It is so fun, and it, and the action sequences are so well done. I, I, even when I have like, a few issues, I still marvel at the technical 
aspect of how they did all this. It is exceptional, the action in this movie. It's funny because, of course, um, John Woo is also kind of noted for like the style of the Hong Kong um, action cinema gunplay stuff that you can see some of the, the inspiration from some other uh, later movies that would kind of adopt some of the styles of stuff that John Woo. I think one of the biggest ones would be The Matrix because you see like a couple of the a couple of the bullet dives where you just got a guy just airborne two guns and in, in his hands just blasting like a madman and you're just like yeah Yep, this is the uh, the origin story of uh, some stylized action that you would see in movies like The Matrix, and even to like a more modern sense, even movies like the John Wick movies as well, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. John Wick owes a lot to what movies that John Woo did, like Hard Boiled. Even if you want to mention like Face Off or Broken Arrow, like the these movies, if it weren't for those movies being successful and being as good as they are, I, I would debate on Broken Arrow. With, with those being so successful, you wouldn't have John Wick. Uh, isn't exactly what John Woo does either in his films. John Wick does a lot of very rapid and fast gunplay, whereas John Woo's stuff, as I've seen in this movie, it, it's more about choreography in like in a dance kind of way. Whereas in John Wick, it's more of we need to get these sequences done as fast as humanly possible. Both are great, but I definitely like what he did in Hard Boiled in this movie, because not only is the gunplay really well, but the sense of space in these action sequences are also incredibly well done. Whereas in, like, I think action movies now, with some exceptions, of course, but with action movies now, the sense of space isn't as important. It's all about what's in the frame. It's all about this person does this in frame, boom, 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 does it really fast, does it really brutally. It's something that The Raid has that kind of thing with it, too. I can't get enough of the action in this movie. Like, the action is just really well done. Like, not only, like, entertaining, but well choreographed. Just a lot of fun to watch in its intensity and in the way it's shot. Like, it is really well done on this. The choreography is, once again, just definitely the centerpiece of the show, especially for the action sequences. Especially because to a casual viewer, they might not be able to see it or appreciate it but in the cacophony of chaos there's definitely a um a sense of uh, coordination behind it and again with john Wu uh, films you expect this and mm -hmm. Again, it's just nothing but exemplary work from J John Woo here. So, as usual, just I think that's really the main spectacle you come to Hard Boiled for. <laughs> mm. So, let me ask you something. H have you seen the other John Woo movies like Broken Arrow and Face Off? Seen Face Off, never saw Broken Arrow. Okay, so I'm I'm asking this for a reason. I remember seeing Face Off in theaters because the big thing is that it was a John Woo movie and you, you had to watch it because John Woo is an amazing director. And if only you saw Hard Boiled, you would understand that. When I look back at Face Off, as much as I think Face Off is a, a good time, Face Off doesn't even compare to Hard Boiled in terms of the action and in terms of the, the overall fun you would have with it. Like, Face Off is fun in different reasons. And Face Off is fun because of the ridiculousness of the concept and to see John Travolta and Nicolas Cage overact like fucking crazy. That's what makes Face Off fun. The, the action's good, but the main thing is to see those two actors just chew scenery. But in this movie, in Hard Boiled, the action takes center stage and is for the better when it's that way. Because I look at John Woo, and whenever I look at all the films that he's done, uh, that I have seen, I should say, characterization and plot ain't his strong suit. It really is not. And, and that also turns out this way, too, in this movie. The, the weakest part of this movie, I think, is the dialogue and some of the plot. This is a, a two-hour movie, a, two, a, a little over two hours. Yeah. This could have been cut a little bit. Like, this, this could have been about an hour and 45, but just fine. But with that being said, like, the film is mostly action. And there are some fun parts that are part of the plot, but it's the action that stands out in this, and it's the action that works. Whereas in Face Off, specifically, it takes a lot to get the plot going because of the, the concept of the movie. And it's weaker because of that. Oh, it's definitely a little bit thin. <laughs> but for the better, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going into Hard Boiled expecting, like, a noir deep story a sort of movie this ain't it 
Like an Infernal Affairs. Like, don't even. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't expect Infernal Affairs from this, because you're not going to get that. No, I, I would definitely agree with that. The, the plot's thin, but even with the little plot that there is, it's just not that interesting to me. I wouldn't mind it being cut, the, the, the plot being cut a little bit to just speed the movie up. Because when you get into the final sequence of the movie, and let me just spoil it right out. The final sequence of the movie is about 45 minutes long. And then when I watched the movie, and I didn't realize that until I watched it, it was like, oh my God, there's like an hour left. And like, oh my God, is this the final part of the movie? Is this like, holy shit, this is great. <laughs> and if I would have known that at first, I would like, that could spell disaster. But it works. It works so well. It really works that the last part of the movie, like the third act is set in the hospital. And that's where all the craziest stuff in the movie happens. And let me tell you something. I've never said, holy shit, so much from an action movie than this movie. Ho that hospital sequence took like three or four of it, like for me. It was like, oh my God, <laughs> what? Like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Like I was saying that constantly. It was insane how much I was loving the action in this movie. And I'm not a big action fan. And I was really invested and interested in this movie. Like, I, I know we're talking about the writing and everything, but... I, the action just flows and fits so well in all this. Like, even like the lesser scenes, quote unquote, lesser scenes of action, I think is uh, well above other action movies. Like if you, the tea house scene, for example, great scene, but then it's taken over, or I would say it was, it's usurped by the scene, the warehouse, which is then usurped by the hospital scene. And I can't get it over how hard that is. It is really hard to up the ante more and more and more without it falling apart. And it doesn't in this movie. And I am... Oh, yeah. I am, it just iteratively yeah. builds. And that's the best part. And, I mean, it's like you said, you know, sometimes some, some movies will talk a big game going, oh, man, the action d doesn't ever stop. And then it's like, uh, after maybe one of the best action scenes, you're just like, ooh, yeah, um, this other action scene that came after the, the big one, oh, uh, it's not so great. And this one... Yeah, it just it starts off with the tea house, and you're just like, holy shit, this is insane. Yeah. And then the warehouse, and you're just like, oh my god, it gets even better? And then the hospital, and you're just like, my god, this is mind-blowing. <laughs> oh my, dude, I I can't get over how great this the hospital sequence is. And that's a sequence where one bad thing could make the whole entire sequence fall apart, and it just works. It works in such a degree that I, I think it lifted the entire movie up. Uh, another movie this is reminding me of, uh, you didn't see it, it's called Warrior. And Warrior is literally, the first hour of the film is the drama and the plot. The second half of the film is, it, it's about MMA fighters. It's, it's about the MMA fighting tournament. Literally, that's all it is. And the issue with Warrior I had was the drama was okay, but then once you got into the the MMA stuff, it was good up to a certain point and then it fell apart at the end. If this sequence did not work to perfection, this would have made the movie fall apart. I just can't get over how great the sequence is. Now I understand why people praise this movie and call it one of the best action movies of all time. Because that, that whole like sequence in the hospital is excellent. It is really good. Really good good i can't get over it why why didn't you convince me to do this early i'm blaming you i'm blaming you <laughs> this movie is definitely one that's definitely in my wheelhouse <laughs> yeah no it's it's fantastic and again i'm not a big action fan i prefer drama i prefer romance i prefer something with a little more depth to it but even i was just like damn this is really good and the action actually helps the movie go along it's not just like uh here's a crazy action sequence and then shitty plot and then, oh, here's another one, and shitty plot. The plot's good. It could be a lot better, but the action is where it's at. It is so damn good. Oh, my God. Like, it is incredible. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm fanboying out here. It's, it's nice. It's <laughs> nice. Let's get into some particulars. Performances, I think the only two we can talk about is Chow Yun Fat and Tony Leung. Tony Leung was okay in this. Like, I thought he was fine. He wasn't, like, great. He played the role fine. I I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it was an amazing... No, it, it was fine. It was fine. It, it was solid, I would say. 
in, in this movie. Tony Leung, he kind of played like sort of the, the asocial gangster slash assassin. And it was kind of an interesting, interesting sort of role to put him in, especially because just usually he usually plays the good cop role the one um, the cop that follows the rules and that sort of thing so mm. to kind of see him in sort of like this asocial assassin type you're just like that's kind of weird they completely flipped him into like kind of a villain role here yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it was it, for me it was kind of an interesting juxtaposition when i saw the movie many years ago and it's still a little bit of a juxtaposition even today <laughs> yeah I mean, it's, he's not bad, but he's not what I would expect from him, knowing his later work. I, so I, I guess that might be my, my, I guess, issue with it a little bit. It's not that I have an issue, but it's like, it's not as good as his later work. So I, I don't see the actor that blossomed into what he was in In the Mood for Love, or even in Chunking Express, even though I did not like the movie. That, that's kind of the eh, thing with me on that movie. But what I will say is I'm surprised by how good Chow Yun Fat is. And... The reason why I'm saying I'm surprised is because my only exposure to Chow Yun Fat is American cinema and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And and Crouching Tiger, he's good. But Michelle Yeoh and Zhang Ziyi are the two best performances in that movie. Whereas in this movie, I don't think I've ever seen Chow Yun Fat in a performance that is actually charismatic. In the movies I've seen him in, I thought he was kind of like the standard straight man he's very stoic the hard rock that the other characters rely on but in this movie he's strangely charismatic in like a weird way and it kind of works in this like i was surprised by this performance the challenge and fat in this one uh, was kind of interesting because um a lot of his roles in at the asian cinema space are kind of interesting because in the hong kong cinema space um uh, for a little while he had the he had a reputation for what some of the hong kong movie fans uh, would say he had the reputation of a baby face killer that he he looks super young super youthful kind of kind of has a babyish looking face but he ends up being put into roles that are like very tough they're very aloof or very very cold even mm. so uh, to see him kind of having a little bit more fun especially like the beginning sequence where you see him just just playing a jazz clarinet and just like hammering down drinks and stuff like that you're just like Whoa, what the shit? <laughs> and his uh, his performance uh, was just fun here. I think mostly just more important pieces are just the action sequences where just, just crazy shootout sort of stuff. You've got like the tactics um, that he uses where they're completely unorthodox. And uh, the best way to describe it is for anyone who watches a whole bunch of Simpsons stuff. It's like McBain, where like he gets yelled at the police chief for like blowing up something, and and then just McBain's like, "Well, why the fuck do you care? I got the job done, didn't I?" <laughs> <laughs> good, good pull for Simpsons. I I approve of any Simpsons references on this podcast. But like I said, like it's a good performance, but I was just kind of stunned he was this arrogant sob in this movie. Like I I thought that was like I didn't see that coming. Like that's weird. But then, again, I'm not familiar with his oeuvre in Hong Kong. So you mentioned the action sequences with John Woo and how he gets to do those. Let's get into direction. I'm glad that you mentioned that because the action sequences, even though they're obviously choreographed, uh, they obviously are, they don't feel choreographed in this movie. And I think that is a testament to his direction because the film, when the action sequence comes up, it still feels chaotic. Like, anything could fucking happen. And crazy things are about to happen, and I don't know what. A lot of action nowadays, and even back then, too, you could choreograph, like, quick. Like, that's, oh, this is obviously going to happen. Oh, and this is going to happen. But it, it depends on the director or the person doing the stunts to be like, well, we have to do it in this different way. In this film, it's especially in the hospital sequence, I did not know what was going to happen next. And I loved the fact that I did not know what was going to happen next. That's because the way that John Woo directed this film made it feel maybe off kilter or not uncomfortable. But in, in a way where, again, like, I didn't know what was happening. I was I didn't know what was going to happen 
in the, the next sequence or w what the direction of the movie is going to go in. And I think that is just a testament of how great of a director he was in this movie. It, it's just really well done. Again, can't get over how good the action sequences are in this movie and the fact that they fit so well. Here's here's my thing, okay? Whenever I have to say uh, the action movies are fantastic, it just feels like I'm excusing the film for being bad because the action sequences are good. And I don't feel this way. I think the film is still very good despite having some problems that I have with it. I still think it's great as a good movie, but it's great because of the action sequences. And I think that's a testament to how good John Woo did as a director in this movie. Uh, my thoughts uh, sort of mirror yours. I mean, most John Woo movies, you come in for the action. Just mm -hmm. you're not really looking for something that's got like a deep and riveting uh, story that, you know, just really gets the gears in your head turning and everything. And this movie is sort of follows that trend i mean you've got like a main general plot of like hey you've got crime syndicates that are wanting to just take over and and there's like a power struggle and stuff like that and i mean it, it's standard fare for like a hong kong style crime movie involving triads and stuff like that so i mean nothing to write home about on on that end, but right. My God, just when the action starts going, my God, does it get going. <laughs> and I think that what really surprises me in, in this film is that the action propels the movie forward, whereas the action in most action films is just something that it, it, it's like the you, you take your vegetables to get your dessert essentially is what I feel is what most action films are. You deal with the shitty plot and characters to get to the good action. And that's not what happens in this movie, despite, again, me having a couple of issues. I think that the action just propels the movie forward to a different level that I think action movies to this day still have not reached. Do you have one small thing to add? Go so um, apparently Tony Leung's uh, character was uh, supposedly inspired by Elaine Delon's uh, character in the French crime movie Le Samurai, oh apparently. God. Really? So, yeah, um, that was kind of something that I thought was interesting when I was doing some supplemental um, research. I was like, interesting. <laughs> so let's get into writing. Okay, so this is where I have an issue with the movie. And it's mainly to do with the dialogue. There are certain parts in the movie where the dialogue is just bad laughably bad when chai on fat's character or is it inspector tequila when he starts yelling at his boss and he starts getting angry the dialogue is hilariously bad <laughs> like it's just like i don't know anybody who would say that but okay pal <laughs> sure there and like i said before the plot kind of drags certain points but once you get to the hospital sequence you kind of fucking forget about it i guess that's the one knock i'd have with the film is that the dialogue can be pretty bad at certain spots what about you as far as the writing goes especially since um i still remember a lot of my cantonese and everything just okay. the dialogue w uh, for some of the like office politics stuff was was kind of like boilerplate crime story sort of dialogue sure. it wasn't super interesting it was just like okay yeah i get it it's a crime movie so yeah whatever other than that just uh when you get to some of the action scenes where you know you've got the standoffs and stuff like that i mean the writing's there pretty pretty standard uh, bog standard stuff but yeah just the writing is is um definitely not anything that's mentally riveting or anything like that i wouldn't have minded if it was wasn't mentally riveting or if it wasn't like verbose or it's like shakespeare i would have been just fine with that boilerplate stuff and it's for the most part it is there but like i say when it's sequences where chai on fat's character gets angry or when alan uh which is tony leung's character is talking to his boss i was sitting there going uh is this like a bad like here's what i thought i thought it was a bad translation i thought it was just like uh <laughs> it's like what that can't be right. That That's kind of what I was feeling when I was watching it. But if you're saying, like, this is all boilerplate stuff that you can see in most of these cop, these cop shows and cop movies, then I'll, I'll take your word for it. But I just sat there going, oh, that's a, that's kind of a downer. It, the, the romance between Chai Yun-Fat's character and Teresa Ma, I, I thought, was actually kind of bad, too. 
I, I thought that was like, ugh. like yeah i mean it was just kind of like the on again off again a uh, couple sort of uh romance dynamic and i was like yeah i really don't care for it <laughs> no. but for the most part i think you said it best it's passable it's boilerplate stuff but it is it's decent enough to where it propels the movie forward so if you're into that type of thing you're fine but what carries the film is the action so really the dialogue doesn't mean as much i guess if, if i wanted to be fair like i would say does the dialogue really matter not really like it's not cheesy in the action sequences which is great is what i would say to it uh, would you agree? Yeah, pretty much. All right, so let's get into final thoughts for our, our review of Hard Boiled. I, I guess I'll go first. I went into this expecting a great movie, which is usually the worst thing to do with me when it comes to watching a movie. Because if I'm expecting it, then I'm expecting it to be almost flawless and also to basically hit those expectations I have. Oh, and you know Zero from video games the more hype there is more harder it is for it to reach those expectations and i'm looking at 20 years of being hyped for this movie and <laughs> wanting to see it and have been told how amazing this is and you have to watch it and never been able to until this very day and i am stunned by the fact that it met my expectations the action in this movie is excellent i cannot understate how great the action is in this movie it is on another level the performances by chai young fat is good Tony Leung is fine. I think the direction of the action sequences are excellent. The writing could have been a lot better, but uh, it, it really doesn't hurt the film all that much. Like The Raid Redemption, it does one thing exceptionally well, and I can comfortably say that it's probably one of the best action movies I have ever seen. I'm giving it four out of five stars. That's one more than I gave The Raid Redemption. If you are an action film fan, you owe it to yourself to spend $2 to rent it on Amazon Prime and watch this movie. I don't even want to hear that you don't want to watch a movie with subtitles. Bear with it. Watch this movie. It is amazing. Four stars for me. I might even say this. You, you, want, me, you, want, you want me to piss some people off? <laughs> you ready? Oh, by all means, do so. You ready? Okay. Better than Die Hard. <laughs> oh, those are spicy fighting words. Better than Die Hard. I, th I think it is. I think it is better than Die Hard. Four stars for me for Hard Boiled. I am probably uh, going to say I'll probably be right at about the 85% mark. Okay. So a little bit higher than your score, but um, I think mostly it's just because of the, the action sequences. The action mm -hmm. sequences, they just iteratively get better. It isn't kind of like a... Okay, first action scene, uh, that was pretty good. Second, holy shit, this was awesome. Third one, wow, that was disappointing. Instead, it's just like, all right, first action scene, damn, that's good. Second one, oh my god, it gets it gets more insane. And then third one, you're just like, what the fuck is even happening? This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only uh, parts I have to dock points on are really just the dialogue. The dialogue is just kind of box standard prime drama movie sort of stuff. Just nothing super interesting, nothing that's like mentally intense like Infernal Affairs or anything. But if you're going into this movie hoping for an Infernal Affairs, then you're watching the wrong movie. Mm -hmm. If you're really big into just Asian choreography in just action movies, this has to be like one of the prerequisite movies to watch because this kind of built the foundation for a lot of the asian action crime movies where they've got like intense gunfights and things like that and i would even venture to say it has influenced a lot of western cinema's fascination with like gunfight choreography as well too so if you're an action movie fan you really should see this one if you haven't done so already yeah can i save myself a little bit of heartache real or, or some problems uh, right now i, I want to say right off the bat that i think die hard has better dialogue so if you want to give me that argument fine go right ahead but when, it, <laughs> but when it comes to the action this movie is tops this is the best that i think i i will have ever have seen and that's saying a lot <laughs> that is saying a lot but this is just for action movies i know somebody's gonna say well you know, actually i think that saving private ryan has better action that's a war movie shut up <laughs> Shut up! But I, I will say, 
comparing to action movies, I think this is the best one. Period. End of statement. I, I want to own this movie, and hopefully Criterion Collection gets it again to, to re-release, because that's the version I want. And I'm not paying $100 for the DVD. That's fucking nuts. So I, I cannot wait. I am so glad we got to watch this movie, man. Oh, man. So happy. Was this the first time you've seen this? Or is this like the... This is either the fifth or sixth time I've seen it. And it's ah. always it's always a treat for me. That's what I want to hear. I, I That's what I want to hear. Four stars for me on Hard Boiled. 85% for you. What up me a little bit there, Zero? I see what you're doing. <laughs> I see what you're doing. I like it, though. I like it. All right, so we are at the end of this review, and we're going to talk about the movie that we're going to be watching next week. Zero, what are we watching next week? Uh, Dark City. Yes, Dark City. This is one of my favorite sci-fi films. This is the 1998 film starring Rufus Sewell, Keita Sutherland, and Jennifer Connelly, directed by Alex Proyas. Um, if you have not heard of this film, there's probably a reason why. It bombed at the box office. It bombed terribly. It, it did not do very well. It made, it didn't make any of its money back. And it, if it weren't for the fact that this got such a big cult following, we probably would have never heard uh, Rufus Sewell or Alex Proyas ever again. But this film is actually a really good movie, and I cannot wait to have Zero watch it and tear me apart for my taste because he will probably hate it. You excited, Zero? Yeah, I mean, it's actually been one movie that I've been meaning to watch, so I'm definitely interested to see how it'll go. I don't think it'll be, like, the worst thing in the world, but uh, definitely it's got my curiosity peaked. Well, you're a sci-fi fan, correct? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think, well, I'm hoping, but I really think you're going to like a lot of this movie. It's different enough in certain aspects, but it's also got some of the, the sci-fi-ness I think you will enjoy. So I haven't seen it in a long time. I cannot wait. I want to watch this again. That is it for this episode of I Am The Wiz. On Thursday, I'll be reviewing Barton Fink, directed by the Coen Brothers, and on Saturday, I'll be reviewing The Quiet Man, directed by John Ford, and then next Tuesday, me and Zero will be reviewing Dark City, directed by Alex Proyas. And with that, I am The Wiz. And I'm Zero. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye.